Dad asked me when I was young, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, oh, I want to be a shearer like you. And he said, oh, that's good. He said, but there's other things you can do too. And encourage me to follow my own path in life. So I have great faith in um, I am where I'm supposed to be. Part of me being here in Waitomo is that maybe three or four of my whakapapa lines is from Waitomo. My path was, was laid out for me by the actions of my grandfather. I've always had a love for abstract art, but it was at a time in a rural environment where, what the hell is that? What, you should be doing flowers and cows. So I'm really proud of my mum set a real good example in following her own dream. So I went to Polytech after high school and I didn't really do well there. I ended up at the Wānanga, got sent there and I just really bloomed in that environment and it just seemed like the fit was right for me. And I saw a new world, I was like, wow, there's actually another world out there. I just really embraced it and thrived. That's what got me to where I am now and who I am. My full art streams would be traditional Māori arts, whakairō rāko, ko whai whai and tāmoko practices. Contemporary Māori art, so just stepping outside the box, more creative, abstract, uh, which is more about getting past the intellect, being intuitive, non-logical, non-intellectual, and teaching practices, community work, art therapy, healing. So all that's going on in the background. I'm part of an evolutionary process in design. Um, it's not mine. So who am I to put myself in to speak on behalf of an old-time Māori artist? Because I'm on my phone and in a book whereas they were in the bush and watching the water and how it moved and stuff. So it's a constant reminder for me to ground myself. So Māori art is like a woven thing. When I do a lot of work, I don't come up with the ideas. I sit with kaumata or client and I translate, but I have to turn their literal world into a symbolic world, which are worlds apart. It's like trying to explain a dream. I'm doing that in reverse. I'm taking our world and trying to take it back to a dream state. This is something I did maybe 10 years ago. This is me, my brother and two sisters before we were born. This is the doorway that we came into this realm through. I've depicted us as not fully formed, quite abstract. These pakati represent generations, DNA, evolution, all those that came before us and the lessons we've learnt from them. This is called whakarare and these represent um, deviation on the path. Uh, when you decide to cut a new track or you learn something new and you become a new person. So this is a personal piece, yeah, me and my whānau really, and especially mum. At this phase of my career, I'm feeling quite confident. I know that I've achieved stuff. I'm currently trying to move towards no commission work so that I could do service for my iwi and my loved ones, our people here. A lot of healing takes place here. People open up their vulnerabilities. They come here and do a little bit of art and all of a sudden they're telling you about their obstacles in life that they were afraid to face and spend a little bit of time here and you just see that smile come back, uh, skipping their step. You've got to have something that gives you a spark, eh? Even if it's once a week, you get that bit of life back in you and then you can go back to work, do what you've got to do, but just trying to encourage people to have a healthy practice. Coming here and um, leasing this space to fulfill a dream means that um, I have to do stuff. It's a good carrot, motivation, and so I just set myself challenges now and um, just do what you gotta do.